name is Bella. Welcome to math class today with my mom. You may know her as Ms. Moore and she teaches at Juniata School. She loves to be silly and make birthday hats for me every year. We just celebrated my 14th birthday. Anyway, good luck with division in math today. And P.S. There's a surprise at the end of this video. Don't peek! Today's lesson is interpreting remainders in division number stories. And the word interpret means that you'll decide what to do with the remainder if you should have one left after you divide. And that means it's important that you really understand all of the pieces of the number story as you move along. Check out these two examples of division number stories with remainders. Division with remainders. Think about this problem. Suppose three students share 14 counters equally. How many counters will each student get? You can pass out the counters one by one. You can see that each student gets four counters. Since two counters can't be broken into smaller parts to share, there are two counters left over. This is the remainder. Look at this number model for 14 counters shared equally by three students. In the solution, the quotient four is the number of counters each student gets. The remainder, two, is the number of counters left over. In this case, since you cannot split the remaining counters among three people, ignore the remainder. Each student will get four counters. Interpreting Remainders Suppose 14 photos are placed in a photo album. How many pages are needed if three photos can fit on a page? Since each page holds three photos, place three photos on this page. There are still more photos, so use another page. There are still more photos to place in the photo album. Continue to use more pages until all of the photos are on a page. A fifth page is needed to include all the photos. Even though the last page does not have three photos on it, you can see that all five pages are needed to place all 14 photos. This is the number model for 14 photos placed on pages that fit three photos each. This means that four pages will be filled and there is a remainder of two photos. The remainder in this problem, two, cannot be ignored because these two photos also need to go into the photo album. To answer the question, how many pages are needed, round up from four pages to the next whole number, five, since four pages won't be enough for all of the photos, five pages are needed. For math today, I need you to help me with my scrapbook. You will need a pencil and a piece of paper to help me out with my project. So push pause and I'll meet you back here when you are ready to continue. So, I've been working on a project since I need to stay at my house a lot lately. And I love my pups, Bella and Piper, and I love taking pictures of them too. So, I decided to gather them all together and make a photo scrapbook. 
but I wanted some other pet photos, so I texted my school friends and I asked them to send some of their favorite pet pictures to me. So consider the following number story. Help Ms. Moeller make her scrapbook. Ms. Moeller wants to make a digital scrapbook of pet photos. On Monday, she collected 50 photos. On Tuesday and Wednesday, she collected 60 photos each day, and on Thursday, she collected 55 photos. On Friday, she texted her school friends and they sent her more photos of their pets. So I thought you might like to take a look at some of the photos that my school friends sent to me. While you're watching, take a tally or a count using your paper and pencil of the number of photos that I received from my friends. Watch carefully because you may recognize some of their pets. When you are finished watching, be sure to count your tally marks to find the number that I collected on Friday. And get ready to dig into our story problem. And by the way, this is how you make a tally mark. All right, enjoy the photos and here come the pets. I hope you enjoyed those awesome pet pics. Did you see any that you recognized? Push pause now to take a minute to count your tally marks and then push play when you are ready to continue. So how many pet pics did you tally? If you found the number 32, you were correct. Good job. Okay. Let's delve into our story problem and let's reread it one more time. It says, Miss Muller wants to make a digital scrapbook of pet photos. On Monday, she collected 50 photos. On Tuesday and Wednesday, she collected 60 photos each day. And on Thursday, she collected 55 photos. On Friday, she texted her school friends and they sent her a total of 32 pet photos. Suppose she wants to place five photos on each page of her scrapbook. How many pages will she need? Well, we've read the problem a few times and now it's time to figure out exactly what it is that the number story is asking us to find. And if you think about it, that question is usually located where? If you said at the end of the number story, you are correct. So I'm gonna look at the end of the number story to find my question, and right here it is, connected to that question mark. And it says, how many pages will she need? So we now know that we have to find how many pages she will need. But I am thinking that I will need to figure out something else before I can find that answer. Can you think of what it is that I'll need to figure out before I can find that answer? If you said the total number of photos that she has, you are correct. 
So let's dive into the story problem and figure out how many photos she collected all week long. I'm looking for important information. Oh, let me see. Hmm. Ms. Muller wants to make a digital scrapbook of pet photos. And on Monday, she collected 50 photos. That's certainly important. And on Tuesday and Wednesday, she collected 60 photos each day. And on Thursday, she collected 55 photos. And on Friday, she texted her friends and they sent her a total of 32 photos. Hmm. Well, let's see. How can I figure that out? What will I need to do to figure out the total? Can you think of what I need to do? If you said add all of the photos together, you are correct. Good thinking. So I always find it helpful to take that important information that we found and organize it somehow in a picture form. So here's just one idea of how we might be able to do that. So I'm looking at those days of the week and I'm seeing that on each day there were different amounts collected. So I'm going to make my list there's Monday, she had 50 photos, and on Tuesday, she had 60, and also she had the same amount on Wednesday. She also had 60, and on Thursday, she collected 55, and on Friday, we found out that she had 32 pictures. So then, what do we have to do to those numbers? If you said add them, you are correct. So I'm going to look at the ones column first. 5 plus 2 is 7. And I add 5 plus 6, and that's 11. Very good. And I add 6 more. And what does that give me? If you said 17, that's excellent. Plus 5 more is 22. And 3 more gives me 25. Our total number of photos is 257. Good job. After adding my number of photos together and finding that I have a total of 257 photos for my book, I can now find how many pages I'll need for my scrapbook. I need to remember that I am only placing five pictures on each page. So what should I do next? If you said divide 257 by five, you are awesome. Well, boys and girls, it's finally time. Let's divide. We are going to actually use the partial quotient method, which is a method that you have been practicing. So let's set it up. So my um, number of 257 photos, that will be my, look to the left in the green words, and can you tell me what that number will be in a division problem? That will actually be the dividend. Very good. And the next number we have to place in our problem is the number 5. Now the number 5 represents 
the amount of pictures we will put in each group. And I will place that right here. And does anybody know what that number is referred to as? If you said divisor, you are correct. So setting up the problem, you may be familiar with how that looks. And I have to ask myself, where will my answer go to my problem? If you said right here, you are correct. And what's that answer called in a division problem? That's right, if you said it's a quotient, you are correct. Good job. All right, so we need to start to divide. And we have to think to ourselves, what is 257 divided by five? So I am thinking to myself, how many groups of five are there in 257? Now, in using partial quotients, I can think of smaller numbers, if that helps me out. So I might think to myself, hmm, I might start with a 10. Would 10 groups of five give me 257? Well, it would certainly give me 50. So I might wanna try a bigger number. So let's double that and try 20. So 20 times five would give me 100. So I am getting closer, but you know what? I think if I doubled that 20, that would even get me even closer. So if I tried the number 40, let's try that. And I would take 40 times five groups, and that would give me what? If you said 200, you are on a roll. So you probably remember at this point, we subtract. Seven minus zero is seven. Five minus zero is five. And two minus two is zero. All right, we still have 57 left. So we have to ask ourselves, how many groups of five are in 57? Well, I'm thinking of my number facts. Let me see, five times five would be 25. I'm trying to get close to 57. So six times five would give me 30. 10 times five would give me 50. You know, I like that answer. I'm gonna try it out. So 10 times five gives me 50. And I, as usual, I subtract. And when I subtract seven minus zero, that equals seven, and five minus five equals zero. Well, I'm getting close. I'm not finished yet though, because my seven is larger than the divisor. And that means I have to keep going and keep dividing. So I ask myself, what times five would give me seven or the closest number without going over the seven? So it will be, did you say a one? If you did, you are correct. And I take one 
times 5, and that equals 5. And I subtract, as usual, 7 minus 5 equals 2. So I have to ask myself, is 2 smaller than the divisor? And the answer is yes. So that means that I am finished dividing, and I have 2 remaining. So I'm not quite done. I have to add my partial quotients over here. 0 plus 0 plus 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. And this number is the quotient. So my answer is 51 remainder 2. It's finally time to interpret our remainder. For our number story, our number model is 257 divided by 5 equals 51 remainder 2. And we need to decide how many pages I will need for my scrapbook. So I definitely know that I need 51 pages. However, what should I do with the two that are remaining? If you were thinking that I need to make one more page and place those two pictures on it, you got it. So now we know that I will need a total of 52 pages for my scrapbook. Excellent job today, boys and girls. Now, take a look at the home link that goes along with this lesson. It's 7-7. And be sure to keep watching the whole way to the end of the video. And thanks for watching Math Today, boys and girls.